Hi. Now, we've got a question here which is all about transformations of graphs, which you might like to try. Or if you've had problems, I've got the work solutions anyway here. Okay, so what are we given? We're given in this figure, figure 2, we're told, although I haven't written figure 2, it shows part of the curve with equation y equals f of x. And the curve passes through the points p with coordinates minus 1.50 and the point q which has coordinates 0.5. And on separate diagrams we've got to sketch the curve with equation in part a y equals the mod of f of x and in part b y equals f of the mod of x and then in part c y equals 2f of 3x. And in each graph we've got to indicate clearly on each sketch the coordinates of the points at which the curve crosses or meets the axis. Okay, well let's start with A, okay? So we'll set up our axis, so we've got our y-axis. Don't forget, by the way, to always label them. I often find that people leave out the labels. Anyway, we've got that. And uh, what happens when we put a mod sign around the function of x? Well, it means that any negative values of f of x become positive. So in other words, when any, any of the y values, which would normally have been negative, that's this part down here, become positive. So this part of the graph is reflected in the x-axis. So you're going to get your graph then coming down like so, Okay, going through the point Q there, that's going to stay exactly the same, comes down to here to P, and then it's reflected back up like that. Okay, so that's the kind of shape graph you're going to get. So we've got to indicate clearly the coordinates of the points at which the curve crosses or meets the axis. Well, this point here at Q still is at Q, that's the point with coordinates 0,5. And this point P here still remains exactly the same. Okay, so that's the point P with coordinates minus 1.5 and comma 0. All right, so I hope that's given you some idea on that one. Now in part B, we've got y equals f of the mod of x. So to sketch this, you should be familiar with this type of transformation by now. If not, you can always check out these transformations on my website. Okay, They've got uh, several examples on them. But when you have the mod of x, what happens is you take the side on the right of the y-axis, the part of the graph on the right of the y-axis, so that's that part there, we'll draw that part in, okay, and what happens is you ignore everything on the left of the y-axis, all that happens is you reflect this part in the y-axis, so you're going to get a curve looking something like this, okay. That's because, very briefly, that if you've got a negative value of x and you're going to plot it, say like when x was minus 1, if you were here at x is minus 1, then what you're doing is the mod of that, so you're looking really at plotting at this point, what you get when, f, uh, when x is 1. So you're doing f of 1, which would have been the point over here. So that's why we end up reflecting points across the y-axis. Okay. Anyway, where does it cross the axis? Well, it only crosses the y-axis at the point Q. It still remains at Q. That point there then is at 0.5. Right, well, that's that one. Now we're on to C. And again, just draw our axis. And uh, what we've got to do here is sketch y equals 2f of 3x. Now, we start with f of 3x, and what this does to any graph of f of x is it causes the graph to be stretched by a scale factor of a third parallel to the x-axis 
with any points on the y-axis being invariant. That is, they don't move. So if we were to go back to our original graph for f of x, when we do this 3x, f of 3x, points like this one, for instance, are going to now be horizontally away from the y-axis, but just a third that distance. So you're going to be about there for that point. This point here at p is now going to have that distance take a third of it. So it's going to be about there. In fact, that point is going to now be at point minus 0.5, a third of minus 1.5. A point like this one would be a third the distance away from the y-axis there. This point stays invariant, okay, so it's going to go through there. This point here will be a third that distance, so it'll be about there. So hopefully you can see that f of 3x is going to be a graph that's going to come up like this through there, something like that, okay? So that is the graph, we'll put a little arrow to that, okay? That is the graph of f of 3x. Now, once we've done that, when you come to multiply by 2, this causes a stretch, scale factor 2, parallel to the y-axis, with the x-axis being invariant this time. So what we're doing is we're taking this graph here of f of 3x and just pulling it out by a factor of 2. So essentially, it's still going to have much the same kind of shape. This point, though, stays invariant. So you're going to have a graph then that's going to look something like this, coming up like that, very steep. OK? Now, we need to mark in the points where it crosses the y-axis. Well, it was at 0, 5. Now we've multiplied it by 2, it's going to be at naught 10. So this point here is now going to be at naught 10. Now as for this point here, remember it was this point over here, and it remained invariant when we stretched it by a factor of 2, parallel to the y-axis. This point was a third this distance. So a third of minus 1.5 is going to be minus 0.5. So the coordinates of this point here are going to be minus 0.5, 0. All right, so I hope it's given you an idea then on sketching these various types of graphs through these transformations.